Well, hello, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm just going to check to make sure that I'm actually live. Awesome, I am, very good. <laughs> uh, you never know with this technology stuff, so you gotta check sometimes. Um, so I wanted to have this uh, conversation, and I actually do want it to be a conversation um, because uh, I did write a post on Facebook, and so I wanted to uh, bring some things to light, perhaps, and to share what is important to consider if you are, if you do consider yourself a healer or if you assist people, facilitate healing for people, uh, it is important to understand how to actually truly help. And, you know, I've been doing this for over 12 years and I've had strong mentorship along the way. So I feel really blessed because, um, you know, some are just awakening to this and don't really know how to navigate using their spiritual gifts and healing abilities. So I wanted to bring this conversation um, to the table and uh, please um, not bringing any judgment to it. I want people to understand. Hi, Candace. I want people to understand that what I'm about to share, I'm sharing just um, as part of the conversation so that we can really understand what's going on here. I'm not bringing any judgment to it. So I want to be clear about that first. Thank you, Daya. So I'm going to start at the beginning. I'm going to start with a post that I um, shared a couple days ago, and then I'm going to share uh, a message that someone sent me that sparked then my second post about healers, please uh, don't go into someone's field without their permission. So this was the first post that I wrote. I said, I feel very blessed that I have done so much inner work on myself, that I have a great deal of stability in these times of transition, despite my ultra sensitive empathic nature. That said, today, I just want to lose it, to fall apart, to not have to deal with 3D life. I agree to penetrate the 3D matrix with light as part of my service, but today feels like a total failure. I know I'm not a failure. I'm just feeling that energy around some stuff. I want to share with you because I want you to know that I'm real. I see some coaches and spiritual teachers painting the picture perfect life for you to see. Honestly, I do usually feel like my life is amazing, but not today. Today sucked. There is another huge piece of density coming up to the surface for me to see. <laughs> Thank you, Charlotte. <laughs> um, I'm not sure yet what it is, but I'll figure it out when I'm ready to see it. And so I would love to receive your love. If you have some overflowing within you to share with me, send me some whooshes of love. My heart is open to receive. Okay, so you'll notice in that post that I didn't ask for help. What I asked for was love. I didn't give anyone permission to come into my field and do work with me. Um, nothing of that nature. I just simply asked, I would love to receive your love. If you have some overflowing within you to share with me, send me some whooshes of love. That is what I asked for. I thought it was pretty clear. <laughs> okay, so then, I think it was the next morning or whatever, um, not actually that important. Uh, well, let's see if I can find it. I got um, the message. Okay, actually, I don't know how to find it. Um, I thought I could. I thought I could figure this out. Um, so basically, this person um, sent me a message saying that they had uh, worked with me and like removed some negative entity and changed my frequency. Um, I was like at negative four hundred, and that person and their team moved it up to one hundred fifty thousand. Like all this stuff that they they did within my field. Now, I'm sure this person had good intentions. I don't know, I don't really know them. Um, I, I just, I trust that they had good intentions. Perhaps they asked my higher self if they could come in, perhaps they didn't, I don't know. But the thing for me is I'm on my human mastery path. And when that person came into my field, they didn't ask my human aspect permission for them to do that. And so that takes away from me because what I'm doing is when when they're, say for example, that it was true, that there was some kind of negative, negative entity attachment. I wanna deal with that if I can. Now, if I need to, I'll get, I'll hire someone and, and get help with that, right? Um, but where I am, 
I want to deal with that. I'm pretty sensitive. I'm pretty in tune. So I can tell when there's something in my energy field that's not mine. And so for that person to go in and remove it without my human permission is not fair to my mastery path. It doesn't give me the chance to do that work on myself. Now, I'm not saying that I always want to do that. Sometimes I want assistance with it. Sometimes I want help. But specifically in this uh, situation, I really felt like I like I am slogging through some heavy stuff here. And it is like it's part of my empowerment to do this for myself. And even, you know, I've had a mentor for over 12 years. Even he will still ask permission to come into my field. And he knows me and he knows that I'm totally fine with it. Like, you see something I need help with and it's something you can help with and I'm not ready to do on my own. Like, come and, you know, do it. Like, we've had that conversation, you know. So for this person who I don't even know personally to just come in and do their thing, highly disrespectful. Again, I'm not talking about this to place judgment upon this person or to shame this person. Not at all. I really want you guys to understand, especially if you are facilitating healing for people, that there are nuances and subtleties involved that it's really helpful for us to understand so that we can truly help and empower people. Um, You know, I don't know if this person was on a spiritual ego trip, like, oh, look what I can do for you. You know, I don't know. And honestly, that's not really that important anyway. The point is, um, if you are facilitating healing for someone, you need to keep yourself in check and ask permission. Okay, so then I wrote um, this this follow-up post that kind of is spurring this conversation right now. So uh, let me find it. Give me a second. Okay, so I say, Healers, please do not go into someone else's field without their permission from their human aspect, not just their higher self. Thank you. And then there were a whole bunch of comments that came out of that. And that's kind of what I want to talk about because there were some really good parts of that conversation. I love you too, Carrie. (laughs) Uh, One of the comments was, um, you know, what about children, animals? What about someone who can't give verbal permission? And those in my view anyway and you may have a different opinion and if you do please share that's what this discussion is about in my view if someone cannot give you verbal permission from their human aspect that is a time when you ask their higher self is this okay for me to go into your field and assist is it okay for me to do some you know bring in some light into your field to help and so if it's an animal Um, You can ask that animal's higher self, the I am presence. If it's your child, um, you can have a conversation with your child. Like one one person messaged me and said, you know, I'm kind of new to all this. What about my kids? And what I suggested was, um, you know, talk to your children and ask them, say, you know, find a time when they're calm and, and ask your child, you know, if, if you're upset or if you're feeling hurt, is it okay for mommy to come into your, is it okay for mommy to send love and light into your body? Like, is that okay? And if the child says no, they like ask, well, you know, why not? What, why would, why do you say no? Is there something that I need to know? Is there more that I can, um, need, you know, is there something more that you can share with me? So, Kids are, the thing is like, kids are really smart about this stuff and they will be honest with you and they understand way more than you think they do. So treat them as if they understand exactly what you're talking about because they do. And then you will have a much, um, a much better relationship with them and develop rapport and respect. So you can ask your children and if they know, if they say no, and if they give you a good reason for saying no, you can still assist. You can surround them. You can surround their field with love and light. You don't have to, um, you know, go into their DNA and manipulate. You don't have to, you know, work on changing their frequency. You can simply just surround their field. Okay. So there was a question here. Let's see. Okay. 
If the intent is love, should it be okay? I mean, love isn't a bad thing, right? I know when it happened to me, I felt weird at first, but after thinking about it, it turned out that I had a cap on receiving love too. So it was a twofold lesson. Yeah, it's usually a twofold lesson. <laughs> um, if the intent is love, that doesn't automatically make it okay. Like I said, this person may have had completely, deeply loving intentions for me, but what what they did was they took away um, my my mastery practice. Now, honestly, I don't think that it really did anything because my higher my higher self and my my team <laughs> knows how to work with my field and protect me in that way. Um, but say it had changed something, even though this person may have had full and complete intentions of love, them coming into my field and changing my frequency or removing a negative entity or whatever takes away from my ability to practice my mastery. And that's really important for me. If I'm going to be a spiritual leader, a spiritual teacher, or whatever, I need to be in my mastery. I need to be practicing that every day. And if I feel like I'm at a point where I can't do this alone, then I reach out for help and I ask specifically for what I need. But to just come into my field and do that takes it takes a gift away from me. So um, Jaya, even if the intent is love, um, yeah, that's not love, that's control, exactly. Um, even if the intent is love, um, it's, that's not always, that's not always enough, uh, because there are subtleties and nuances to all of this. Um, and, and Ed, you know, that person, again, may not have been thinking of, of it in that way. They may have had completely pure intentions um, but you, you just, you just, can't, <laughs> you just can't go into someone's field and do that. <laughs> okay. Um, Robin asked, how do you know they were doing something? Did they inform you? The energy feels like they really thought you needed help. Yeah. Um, so I got a message from them and I was going to read the message, but I couldn't access it on my phone here while I was doing this. Um, Yes, Ed, thank you. Don't focus on being a leader. That's ego. Instead, focus on mastery. Yeah, exactly. Um, I have kind of labeled myself as a leader. So, <laughs> um, yeah, that's why I said that. But you're right. It's not about me being a leader. It's about working on my mastery. So, um, I wanted to get back to this other question. Okay, Robin was asking, how do you know that they were doing something? Yeah, so they told me exactly what they did. Um, and that's, I, I, they informed me after the fact, you know, again, without asking my permission. Um, yeah. And they, they may have sensed that I needed help and that's, that's totally fair. You know, a lot of us are sensitive. A lot of us are empathic and they may have sensed that I needed help. Um, however, there's still permission that's needed. Um, you know, you guys all the time, I, sense that my friends need help or, you know, my YouTube subscribers or whatever, but I do not go into their field and help unless they ask me to. That is, first of all, for me, that saves a lot of energy, a lot of time. Um, second of all, I see my, my community as empowered. And so if they want help from me, they know they can come and ask. If I just go in and start helping and working with their frequencies or field or whatever, that is not honoring their empowerment. So that's my perspective on that. Um, okay, there was another. But it can't be received if you don't accept it, right? Can it? <laughs> that's a good question, Candace. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um. <sighs> Yes and no. So there are things that people can do within your field if you don't accept it. Um, and the more you are with your own energy, the more you are aware about your energy and the energy of other and, and what's different and what's the same, the more you can say, yes, this is for me or no, this is not for me. 
So in some ways, um, yes, you can receive it even if you don't accept it. Uh, and this is why I talk so much about being with your own energy. Um, I did do a Facebook Live about that where I was wearing the fun little uh, <laughs> fun little uh, thing on my head, the unicorn horn or whatever it was, I don't remember. Anyway, that's why I talk about so much, uh, being with your own energy is so important because the more you're with your own energy, the less this other stuff can get in and the less it's even necessary for um, external assistance because you're with your energy, you're with your soul, you're with your essence, you're with your heart, you're with you and most people a lot of light workers, especially, are are running around uh, not with their own energy because they're empathic, because they're sensitive, and so they're feeling everything else, and they take it on, and um, you know, on and on and on. You know that story. So, when you are with your own energy, it is a lot easier to say, you know, no, I don't accept this in my field. And I I did mention that in the post because I think maybe Robin was asking a question about that. Uh, let me see if I can find my comment about that. Um, it's you know this is a really important discussion, you guys. So um, that's why I wanted to to bring it to the table. So um, Robin says this is important. As you said, you were not asked. I have spent time in conversation and discernment about how others can get in our field. For the, we create everything from our dominant thoughts and vibrations, people. I have wondered about the external influence, the person who mojos their way into your field. Can this alter the dominant vibe and outcome? Some tell me no way. What do you think? Working where I do now with other healers and trying to do marketing for everyone, I am definitely seeing odd wavelengths colliding. So I, my response was, I believe this might depend upon the strength of the person and their field. I know my energy enough to know when there is an intrusion. For someone who is scattered, uninterested, and or not with their own energy, something or someone could easily intrude unnoticed and begin to use your field for their benefit. You know, think about possession, implants, entities, and such. If you have awareness of your energy and field, you would never let those things in. This was high level mastery. And so this is this is the journey. You know, we're all helping each other out with this. Even the person that um, you know a, attempted to assist me, um, teaching me things, uh, inspiring me to bring this conversation to the table, bring it into the light. Hey, let's let's talk about this because people are waking up to their spiritual gifts of healing. People are coming into their knowing that they're they're healers or they have abilities to assist people. And it's important to understand that there are certain, you know, rules <laughs> that can be followed. So first and foremost, we want to empower people with our abilities of healing, our abilities um, to uh, to see into people or, you know, whatever your abilities are. Always, 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 always. It's about empowerment. It's not about your gifts as a healer. Um, I, I don't actually call myself a healer unless I'm talking about myself. I heal myself. I don't heal my clients. I don't heal other people. I facilitate for them, but I am not their healer. They are their healer. So even that simple shift in understanding is empowering for that person because I don't ever do things to take away their ability to heal themselves. I bring things to light for them. I maybe point things out or ask good questions. Um, but I don't ever, you know, change or manipulate uh, in a way where they're not empowered to work with it. I don't know if that makes sense, but um, I'm only doing things with people that they are ready to work with, with those energies. So yeah, there are spiritual laws. <laughs> um, okay, this is, oh, this is an interesting comment. Okay, so Jaya says, I find that pr saying prayer and visualizing people surrounded by light allows me to have an outlet for my intent and urge to heal others. So I would, in, I would encourage you to ask yourself, what is this urge to heal others about? Okay. <laughs> If you're having an urge to heal others, 
there's something underneath that that you may want to look at. Uh, I don't know how deep I want to go into that now because um, I'm having this conversation about gaining permission, right? Um, okay, Jaya, if you want me to go deeper into that, put a comment, let me know. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to leave it at that. I would, I would look to see what is underneath that urge to heal others because there's something there. Okay, one of the things that I learned that was really powerful for me early on was to ask permission, first of all, not just to offer my opinion or advice, to ask permission if they wanted it, because when someone says yes or no, it makes things clear. Okay, Jaya, uh, thank you. Thank you for giving me permission. <laughs> um, usually when there is an urge to help or an urge to heal, it has something to do with a, an underlying lack within you. Um, yeah, it could be a self-esteem issue like, oh, it'll give me more worth if I can help someone. That's awesome, Jaya. I love it. You're learning. That's beautiful. Thank you for receiving this today. Um, so ask yourself, what is that about? What is that urge about? For me, it was about an unrest within me. I wasn't at peace with myself. I wasn't at peace with my abilities. I wasn't at peace with um, the dis discrepancy between where I was in my life and where I knew I could be. Um, there was deeper healing work that I had to do for myself. And when I turned it all back around and did the healing work on myself, I no longer had that urge to, to heal others or to help others. Like the more I'm at peace with myself, the more I'm at peace with others in their unrest and others in their chaos. Like my friends can be in chaos around me, but if I'm at peace with myself, then I'm okay. I don't feel the urge to help them. So D Jaya, does that make sense? Does that, is that helpful for you? Uh, just put a comment there if you want to and let me know. <sighs> okay, is there anything else we need to address in this conversation? Um, just put a comment, let me know. Um, yeah, are you, are you, you're probably an empath, <laughs> right? Jaya, are you an empath? <laughs> It's hard to be, it's hard sometimes around others. I totally understand. And again, that's why I go back so often to the conversation about being with your own energy, because when you're with your own energy, it is so much easier as an empath to be around others who are in chaos. Yeah. Who are in chaos, who are in upset. When you're an empath, it is, it can be a real challenge, but when you learn to be with your energy, your soul essence, then it is so much easier. Yes, I totally understand, Jaya. I am an ultra sensitive <laughs> and that, sensitive to everything. And you know what though? That has served me because that allows me to deeply feel into myself. When a client does come to me for assistance, it enables me to deeply feel them and reflect that back to them and, and bring information forth for them that they may not have, have clarity on but because I can feel so clearly, I have that clarity for them. So being an ultra sensitive empath is a gift. It is a double edged sword. And it does mean that you are here to develop your mastery with that. You would not have the ability to be sensitive and empathic if you weren't meant to have mastery with it. So you came here, took a human form and have those attributes as part of you so that you can develop mastery around those, so that you can share and help others in that regard. Um, but before you can help someone else, you need to help yourself. That's the first, that's the first rule. Uh, yeah, you can feel everyone in your body. <laughs> yeah, totally understand that. Um, but the first rule in helping others or off facilitating healing for others is for you to heal yourself. That's the way it works. And you'll be much more effective, much more clear when you heal yourself first. So I'm not saying that you have to um, be completely healed in order to help others. I'm not completely healed. I'm still on this planet. I'm still doing my inner work. I'm still addressing my shadow every day, right? So what I'm saying is that where you are now, there will be someone who is not where you are that can benefit from the wisdom you have at this point. And so don't hold yourself back from offering assistance to others just because you're not fully healed. Um, none of us are, you know, we wouldn't be on this planet still if we were, we wouldn't have, 
you know, this relationship with each other if we were completely healed. So um, say more about that, Ed. Are you, are you talking about being sensitive and empathic and having a difficulty um, staying centered? Yes, Elaine, healing starts with self. When you are healed of self, you can then become of service to others. Yes, and as a healer, it is important to receive as well as to give, absolutely. Okay. Um, oh, I didn't see your other comment, Ed. Yeah, you're that way. If, if others are upset, then you tend to get upset. Yeah, sure. And so I would, I would be okay, because we're going in this direction, we're just gonna do a quick little thing here. I'm just gonna close my eyes, and if you'd like to do it with me, that's cool too. So just feel your body. How does your energy feel? How does it feel to be with your energy? And if you're able to feel your energy, just notice what's around you how the energy is different than yours. And this, this is not about going away from oneness and into separation. This is about being whole within yourself so that you can then move into unity and oneness. So feeling your energy and then tuning into the energy outside of you just notice the difference. How does it feel to be with your energy? How does it feel to be with the energy of other? How does it feel to be with your energy? Can you feel a difference between your energy and the energy of others? And so to take time each day to get in that quiet space where you can quiet your mind and you can feel your own being, feel your own body, Feel your own energy and ask yourself those questions. How does it feel to be with my energy? How does it feel to be with my essence? How does it feel to be with my heart, with my soul? And ask yourself those questions over and over because when you ask that question, you elicit the feeling and the knowing of that. And it may take some time to get there. It may take some time to be clear what's yours and what's not. It may take some time to even connect with your own energy if you've been disconnected for a long time. So be patient with yourself in this process. I didn't learn it overnight. I'm still learning it. Right now, I know that I'm still not completely with my own energy. There is an aspect of me out there doing something and I'm like, try, you know, trying to bring it back in. Um, but that's okay. You're on the journey. You're in the process. The important part is to be in the process with some level of awareness and asking those questions brings more awareness. So I think we'll end with that unless you guys have other questions or other, um, other things that you want to explore in relation to this topic about um, not invading other people's space as a healer. Um, at some point, it would probably be good for me to kind of spell out those subtleties and nuances that I mentioned earlier, like heal yourself first, ask permission, um, ask permission of the human aspect. Um, you know, there, there are so many little things to consider. Uh, if you are sensitive, then it'll be easier for you to sense, is this person ready and willing to receive what I have to offer. That's, a, that's another thing. Like if someone's not wanting to receive from you, back off, <laughs> you know, if, 
if they say no, or you can sense in their energy that they are not ready for what you have to give, back away, give it to someone who's ready for it. That's an, that's another thing. Um, I see people who are still, you know, maybe new in this or, you know, and I, I, I did it too, for sure. Absolutely. Um, when, when you have something valuable to give and you just want to give it and you know, it's helpful and you know that it could really transform people's lives if they would receive it. Well, if that person's not ready to receive it, find another way to share it, give it to yourself, give it to someone who is ready, you know, um, put yourself out there so that people know that you have this to offer to them. And when they say yes, then it's like the energy is uh, so amplified and um, the results people get are so much deeper because they are willingly coming saying, yes, I want this. So, okay, Jaya, what about sending energy with a clause that it go to someone else who is receiving or into the earth? Okay, so uh, I love this question. This is great. So what I like to do is um, when I'm like overflowing energy in that way, is I fill myself up first, the self-love, the self-honoring, fill up my heart. Just fill up my heart for myself, loving myself, honoring myself, respecting myself, all those good juicy things, filling my heart, filling my heart. And then it's just like so full with love for myself that it overflows. And what I say is, you know, I send out this energy to any being that is willing and ready to receive it and I just, you know, overflow it. So always filling yourself up first and then allowing it to overflow to whomever's ready to receive. And that's a beautiful way you can offer. And that way, if someone's not ready to receive it, you're not forcing it. And someone who is ready to receive it, it's just like this beautiful flow. And then you get that, you know, infinity wave, that synergy, and it's and it's amplified and it's beautiful. So that's, um, hope that's helpful, Jaya. That's one thing that you can do. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. <laughs> that's always the fun thing with uh, these Facebook lives. I never know how to pronounce people's name. Okay. So thank you all for being with me. Um, if you want to learn more about finding your freedom, we do have the Creation Temple Retreat coming up May 19th through 21st. There are still spots left. So you can go to creationtemple.com slash retreat. Find your freedom with us. We are going to have a massively expansive weekend together where we do our shadow work and where we also allow in more of our light, our spiritual gifts. So if that's you, if you're feeling called, check it out, creationtemple.com slash retreat and join us. Uh, registration does close at the beginning of next week, so not a whole lot of time left. All right. Love you guys. Thank you for being with me in this conversation. Uh, please share this video with others if you, find, if you know someone that it would help and uh, just offer you so much love and gratitude. Thank you for your support. Thank you for loving yourselves, and I will see you in the next video. Mwah. All right, I'm going to figure out how to end the video here. Here we go. <laughs> Love you guys.